Welcome back. So let's take a little bit more at that die that we created, and let's give it a little bit more internal functionality. When we created the die class, we have a roll die public function here, which is generating a random number, and it's assigning that to the go to and stop method. So this will work visually, but the die has no real value. That's because we're not storing this, um, this random number anywhere in our project. So what we can do inside of a class is create a variable. A variable inside of a class is called an attribute. You're going to create the attributes before you create the constructor. So after your class definition here on line 6, but before our class constructor on line 9, we're going to create a variable for our, for our class. Now just like with methods, variables have to have a public or a private, um, private space. So let's go ahead and make it public for now. And we're going to use the var keyword, and we'll call this die value. And die value is going to be a, a number. But it, a die is never a decimal number, so we'll use an unsigned integer. And again, an unsigned integer is a number without a decimal that's always positive, meaning unsigned. It doesn't have a negative sign. So let's go ahead and make this an unsigned integer, uint. And now we can access this attribute throughout our entire project. So let's change or refactor the code that we have on line 16. I'm going to cut our random number generator here and place that on the line before this. But I'm going to take that public variable that we've created, or that attribute, die value, and assign that number uh, that's generated to die value, and then populate die value here. So now if I run this, you'll see that the same thing happens. But now inside of this object, I now have a property called die, uh, die value. So if I go to my dice out document class, after I roll the die, I can access that variable. So I can say trace die one die value. And you'll notice that you will use dot notation here to access that attribute that's within this particular instance of our die class. So now if I save this and run it again, you'll see that it shows the numeric value that's inside of that die. But there is a problem here. If I do this, die1 die value equals 4, you'll notice now I can assign a value to this attribute. We never want that to happen. We only want the roll, uh, roll button to simulate the rolling of the die. Well, when I do this, and then trace it out again, we now have the die value out of sync with what actually was randomly generated on the die. That's because this attribute is currently public. We're going to make it private, but I'm going to show you how you can still get that die value from outside of the function while it's still private using something called a getter and setter. We'll cover that in the next video.